China is going through a heartbreak. It has finally realized that Russia is no friend because Russia has chosen India. Russia and China are having a major fallout and India is the one getting to marginalize China with Moscow getting more and more aligned with Indian interests. We at TFI have been putting out a series of editorials and videos over the past four months exposing the cracks in the Sino-Russian strategic axis of convenience. We have talked about Chinese influence rising in Central Asia, once Russia's exclusive sphere of influence. We have also talked about their Arctic tussles and Chinese claims over Vladivostok and the theft of Russian intellectual property by the Chinese. We've talked about the cracks in Russia-China relations even as the mainstream media kept clubbing Moscow and Beijing together. And now China itself has started feeling the heat over the prospect of Russia joining the League of India and the United States to settle scores with China. And yet new issues are also cropping up. The delivery of Russian defense equipment to India and the suspension of the S-400 missiles delivery to China, which is making Beijing feel that Moscow has chosen New Delhi. While several bilateral issues mar the Sino-Russian relationship, Russia and China have really failed to avoid their own insecurities from going public ever since the Galwan Valley bloodbath between the Indian Army and the Chinese People's Liberation Army. As per a latest report on the South China Morning Post, the Chinese Chinese went up in arms after Russia boosted arms sales to India following the violent face-off in the Galwan Valley. To many CCP trolls within China, the increase in Russian arms sales to India seemed like a stab in the back. One Chinese internet user also said, while fighting your opponent, how would you feel if your friend handed over a knife to your opponent? But Russia doesn't give two hoots about China's concerns. Dmitry Stefanovich, a research fellow with the Center of International Security at the Russian Academy of Sciences Institute of World Economy and International Relations, pointed out that Moscow has been supplying arms to India even before the ongoing Eastern Ladakh standoff. Just like we at TFI had earlier pointed out, Russia doesn't want to stop exporting arms to India. Stefanovich said the Russian defense industry obviously would like to remain in the Indian market, which is getting more and more competitive with France and the US being the most obvious challengers. Another major issue that can be described as an aftermath of Russia's decision to choose India over China is the Vladivostok dispute. Beijing's wolf warriors have started staking claim on the Russian city. Ultra-nationalist Chinese elements are aggravating the Vladivostok tussle. Hu Shijin, the editor-in-chief of Global Times, a CCP mouthpiece that serves as an extended arm of the Chinese foreign ministry, refused to refer to Vladivostok as Tongsi Dongfang or the ruler of the East, which is the meaning of its Russian name and instead Hu Shijin chose to call it by the Chinese pseudonym Haishen Wei. But the biggest shock for China has come from the Indo-Pacific. The Indian ambassador to Russia recently persuaded Moscow to be more involved in the Indo-Pacific. India reportedly sought a quid pro quo with Russia with New Delhi supporting Moscow's Greater Eurasia strategy and Moscow supporting New Delhi's Indo-Pacific initiative that aims to contain Chinese influence in the region. The Chinese strategic circles are outraged with India's attempts to lure Moscow into the Indo-Pacific. Some Chinese commentators have even called it a betrayal of China as explosive as inviting Moscow to join the North Atlantic treaty organization. But with the right incentives, India can achieve this explosive ambition. In fact, the foundation for bringing Russia into the Indo-Pacific was already laid last year when India signed a pact with Moscow for the development of the Chennai-Vladivostok Sea Route. The Sea Route connects the Russian Far East with India and is passing through the South China Sea, almost the whole of which is claimed by China. And now India has come up with another proposal of a trilateral mechanism involving India, Russia and Japan that would officially witness Moscow pursuing its own interests in the Indo-Pacific. As we at TFI predicted, India is bringing the past Cold War adversaries, Russia and the US, closer to a strategic rapprochement. Bringing Russia into the Indo-Pacific becomes a fertile ground for a strategic understanding between Russia and the US to fight a common enemy that is China. 
When asked about Washington's opinion on embracing Russia to counter China, Mike Pompeo said, I do think there's that opportunity. If we may add, it is India which is offering that opportunity. And this is rattling China. India has pushed Moscow to pick a side and Putin has unsurprisingly chosen PM Modi over the CCP General Secretary Xi Jinping. Beijing suddenly realizes that Russia is no friend. In fact, Russia wants to settle scores with China, though an isolated China has no choice but to somehow keep the shallow strategic axis of convenience with Russia alive.